Hello everyone and welcome to Keto Cooking with Cory. Today we are going to be making another Green Chef meal. This one is going to be garlic thyme steaks with parmesan squash and lemon pepper green beans. And with that, let's food! So first off, we're going to start with a squash. You want to trim the ends off and then cut half of the squash lengthwise. Then lay it horizontally and slice across into half moons, about 1 4th inches thick. Now I will do my very best to mince 1 4th ounce of garlic. Just gonna smash that up and dice it. I think that's close enough to being diced. It's pretty sticky actually. Now I want to get some fresh thyme. I want 1 8th ounce at least. So I'm going to use this nifty little trick to get the leaves off the thyme where I push it through a really thin strainer. Ta-da! And that looks about 1 8 ounce. Now to trim the edges off of the green beans. 6 ounces exactly. Guys are more than welcome to cut them in half more. I just like them longer. And super speed and... Voila! So now we're going to take our squash and put it into a medium sized bowl. Come here squashies. Push those out of the way really quick. And now we're going to add at least one tablespoon of olive oil. Get it all olive oily. Okay. And now we're going to use about one fourth teaspoon of salt just a pinch of pepper and now we stir it all up all right that's all good and stirred I already went ahead and preheated my oven to 425 degrees and now I will spread the squash out in a single layer on a lightly oiled foil lined baking sheet Now the recipe says to roast the squash for 8 to 10 minutes or until tender and lightly browned. Although we found that after 8 to 10 minutes they weren't at all browned yet. So we had to double the time. Please note that you do have to flip these halfway through though. Once they are cooked to your desired doneness, that's when you want to sprinkle parmesan cheese over the squash. Return it to the oven and let it roast for about 3 to 4 minutes. Now to my oven, I'm going to heat about one and a half tablespoons of olive oil in a medium saute pan over medium to high heat. I'm going to let the oil cook a little bit and once it is all nice and super hot, that's when I put the steaks in. What I've got here is two ranch steaks, five ounces each. Now we will let those sear in the pan for about three to six minutes. After the minutes are up, that is when you want to come back and flip your steaks. And then let them sear for three to six minutes on that side too. While that side of the steak is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic. And then the thyme. I love the smell of thyme. And then finally, I will add four tablespoons of butter to the pan. I absolutely love this little butter container thing because it makes storing butter super easy and being able to cut the right amount out without making a mess or having to get a cutting board and knife and blah blah blah. And there you go, butter. Just gonna lay that on the steaks and then I'm gonna come back and let the whole butter melt around it. Stirring up the garlic and thyme with it all as I go. You're going to want to finish up the 3-6 to six minutes cooking on that one side or until it's fully cooked to your desire. Now I decided to keep all that delicious steak juice in the pan and use that on the green beans. I did this because I thought it would taste good and there was no instructions saying to keep it. Which apparently I was supposed to, so oops. While the green beans are sauteing, I'm going to add one half teaspoon of lemon pepper herb blend. And now we will let those cook for about four to five minutes or until tender. 
every once in a while coming back to stir them occasionally. All right, that looks good. So let's go back to our cutting board where we placed our steaks from earlier. Now that the steaks are cooled off and all the juices have settled, I can go ahead and cut this. And, oh, that doesn't look fully cooked exactly. Interesting. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy a little bit of pink, but this one's kind of oozing blood a little bit, so... I think I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a baking sheet and put these on there. Fortunately, our oven is still heated up to 425 because our squash is still cooking in there, even though the instructions said for 8 to 10 minutes. So, I guess here we are. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, yeah, that's much better. Still a little pink, but that doesn't hurt anybody. I'm not afraid. Okay, that looks good, so let's check this one, and that one looks much better. So here's the juicy pink ones for me. Gotta make sure it looks all pretty for you guys. And now for my boyfriends. I can't seem to get them to align just right. They look kind of silly, but his steak was kind of shaped silly. Interesting. Mine does look a little more artsy, but think of it as his being more abstract. Yeah, and then it's pretty too. Okay. And now we will add the green beans. A little bit for him. A little bit more because we all need our veggies, even though these are covered in meat juice. And now for me. I put the green beans all pretty on his, but it doesn't seem I can get them all pretty on mine. Can't have it every way, I guess. Close enough. It'll do. And now finally for the parmesan covered squash. Here's my share of the cheesy veggies. And his share. Oh, nope, that's still mine too. Okay, now we can have some. And kind of almost there. There we go. All right, that looks good. The instructions at the very bottom of the page said, spoon the garlic thyme pan sauce, which I used to cook the green beans in, over the steaks. Wish they mentioned that earlier, because I don't have much left. I'm using what I can though. So the sauce kind of looks a little burnt, but that's because I cooked it twice. I'm sorry. Even though the sauce going on top is a bit burnt, it doesn't smell burnt. And we tasted a little bit and it wasn't that bad. It just kind of looks like that. It kind of looks like A1 sauce, so no big deal. These look beautiful and it smells really good. And get this, it actually tasted really, really good. I was getting worried there during the cooking process because everything that was going wrong, but it still ended up okay. I just wish the instructions were a bit more accurate. For all of you guys looking for a keto slash low carb dinner meal, this was actually pretty nutritious and on the spot. And I really do recommend it. Now, here are some pictures so you guys can actually get a good look at what we just made for dinner tonight. While you guys get the look at that deliciousness, I just wanna go ahead and say thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does mean a lot to me. If you guys have any suggestions or ideas of something I can make, let me know. I would love to try it out. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!